usually sits right over here. She's got fibromyalgia, and she is in bed this evening. Of course, we watched her last night get a workout. Praise God. But I, I think, I'm pretty sure that she'll be back tomorrow evening. Praise Amen. God. Ain't gonna keep her down very long. Amen. Praise God. But we appreciate the spirit of the Lord and what God is doing. And, and I, I am just so honored to have my son with us tonight. Amen. Praise God. Come over from Waverly. And, uh, you're his birthday present, by the way, brother. <laughs> you didn't know you were a birthday present, did you? <laughs> Praise God. He turned 40. He turns 40 tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Good night. 4.33 in the morning. Oh, Lord. <laughs> History begins a new chapter tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I told him, I told him, I said, I got Brother Wolf coming. I said, I, I, I purposely invited him over your birthday because I want you to come and hear him preach. And uh, so he's here tonight, Brother Wolf. So this is my birthday present to you, son. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to ask him to come and greet you. It is just good to have him from Waverly, Ohio. They're having a phenomenal revival Great. over there, baptizing people from the Recovery Council. Right and left, they're getting the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, tomorrow, he's got Bible studies for those folks to teach. We're thankful for that. But I'm glad he took time to be with us this evening. And we're going to ask him to come greet you and leave a word with you. Brother Knight, would you come right now? Let's make you feel welcome. Up here this Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. It feels good in here. Amen. Yeah. Glad I could come over and uh, worship the Lord with you tonight. My wife sends her greetings. Amen. When we have four children, you're running them every place. And so she is at ball fields tonight. And, but my daughters came over and daughters, daughter. I got one. Three boys, one girl. And uh, she came over and wanted to be in service. So she stayed the night. And, uh, and my older boys are. He's at home, and, but we're glad to be here tonight to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. We had a great time last time we were here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. With the anniversary services. Amen. Man, did we have a good time. Oh, yeah. uh, God moved in a mighty way, and, and I believe that he touched the hearts of someone. I was teaching our church the other day, that, and God began to speak to me in my prayer time. And he began to speak to me. Yes, the world is in a, in a turmoil, and the world's messed up, and things are going on that's crazy. He said, but... I'm more worried about the church than I am the world. Right. And he led me to two scriptures. And I never looked at them this way until I looked at them through the eyes of what he revealed to me. And it was in the book of Luke chapter 14 and Luke chapter 15 that's familiar. 14 is about the great supper. Chapter 15 is about the prodigal son. The prodigal son we always look at and we say, why did he leave? Why did he go? What did he do? I'm just glad he got right and got back. Right. Amen. Amen. But he didn't lead me to that because we always preach on that. But he led me to his brother. Yes, sir. There you go. His brother was the biggest issue. That's it. His brother was stayed in the church. Right. His brother stayed on the front seat of the church, mm -hmm. worshipped all the time, stayed where he was supposed to be. But when a lost sinner came home, come on, he found all in his heart against him. Come on. Oh my. Mm -hmm. So the problem wasn't with the one that came home. The problem was the one that stayed in the church and never stayed right. So then I looked at chapter 14. When I looked at chapter 14, it's where the great supper was. The king prepared a great supper. When he prepared the great supper, he finally sent out all the invitations and everybody knew. And at that time when they sent out invitations, they sent out garments along with it of what you're supposed to wear. You can take and preach that sometime on holiness if you want. <laughs> but at that time, he said, now the food's ready. He tasted everything, spent all the time. He went out. The very people that he sent invitations to, now listen to this though. The invitations were sent to people that were already saved. True. That's the reason they got an invitation. Right. Read it for yourself sometime in chapter 14. He went to three separate houses. When he went to the first house, the person said, I just bought some land. I need to go check it out. He says, can you excuse me? Then he goes to the next person. When he went to the next person, what did he say? He said, I just bought five yoke of oxen. I need to go test them and see if they're all right. Went to the next house and got an invitation. People that are already saved know they're supposed to be in church, know they're supposed to be making it. Yeah. And the man said, huh, I just got married and I'm still on my honeymoon. Then he goes back and tells the master, tells the king, everything that was said, 
And it says the king got upset. The king says, guess what? You need to go out into the highways and byways. Find every main person and every person that's hot and every person that something's wrong with it. You bring them here. Then he goes in the next verse because the man goes back to him and says, but there's still room. And he says, well, you go back into the streets and you find anybody that you can find. And when he showed me that, I said, my God, I said, it is the church that has the issue. Because the way God blesses us, you see that first person, they got their land. They got everything that they wanted. That's right. And after they got everything they wanted, excuse me, I don't need God. The next one got the car that they wanted, all the yoke of oxen that they wanted. They allowed humanity to take over their life. And the last one allowed a person to take over their life. I pray. I pray, I pray that if the church could ever get this right, if we could ever get this right, there should be the Bible tells us what is going to separate you from the love of God. There should be nothing that should separate you from the love of God. But this just proves what he talked about with Peter when he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Listen, it may not be the ones that we all think oh, are the on. ones. On. But it may be the ones that are hot, the ones that are lame, oh, the drug addicted, on. the alcoholic, the prostitute on the corner. But he's going to have a church. Yes, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Tonight I'm in the church. But I'm not going to be one that says, well, excuse me. I'm going to be one that says, I'm so glad that I'm a part of the family of God. So never forget the value of the church. And just because you get what you need, don't you ever forget who you need. You need Jesus. He's the greatest thing that will ever happen to you. And when I read those scriptures, I said, God, thank you for your revelation. And I pray, and I said, God, I pray that I keep the revelation that everything you give me does not become greater than you. And may we always, because realize, there's going to be people, and I'm going to tell you this in the Holy Ghost, there's going to be people that's going to walk back through these doors like a prodigal son. Come on, yes, yes. And when they walk back through those doors, you better not be like the brother. Come on, that's right. You better not be like the brother that says, why didn't you kill the lamb for me? Because let me tell you something, Jesus is the ultimate lamb that died for everybody. If you're bitter about someone coming back in, go to the last verse of chapter 14. It says, those people that did not come to the marriage supper, it says they did not make it. We better get it right. We had better get it right. But I like the verse before it when it says there's still room. <laughs> there's still room at the table. Let me tell you something. There's a world that still wants to come to the table. If you don't want to sit there, there's somebody going to take your place. Somebody going to take your place. Come on, somebody. Somebody going to take your place. But let me tell you something. I'm coming to the table tonight. I'm coming to the table tonight. And I'm going to be part of the church. And I'm not going to criticize when someone walks through. Because that person is going to be looking for the one that helped get what they got the first time. Yeah. And they want to pray them through again. Yeah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. It's not excuse me tonight, but it's I'm glad I'm in the house. Yeah. 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 Give it some praise.